The harmonic properties of the minor blues allow us to introduce a new concept, that of pentatonics, say, scales. And it enables us uh, to generate new voicing formations and explore them uh, while improvising. One of the main characteristics of pentatonics is the absence of semitones from their pitch structure. This characteristic removes any traces of harmonic tension from their pitch structure. When you listen to the sound of major or minor pentatonics, you can see that on the screen, you can hear that they sound neutral, tranquil, and without any immediately noticeable tonal associations. So let me play some games with you. I'm going to play a major pentatonic. Major second, major second, minor third, major second. So you can see there are two notes missing from, from that pentatonic, four and five, that creates a triton, you know, that very characteristic pungent interval that is present in a major scale, but it's totally absent from a major pentatonic. So see what happens. I mentioned earlier that there are not immediately noticeable traces of uh, tonal traces in that uh, collection. Of course, you can hear it as a major, but if I play a different route, it sounds all of a sudden as a minor. If I play yet another route, it has a completely different status. can experiment with different, uh, uh, different uh, roots while uh, using the same, same uh, pitch collection. That characteristic is will be very important, you know, to kind of kill a few birds with one stone, so to speak. Now the uh, uh, structure of minor pentatonic, and again, it doesn't have any semitones, again, the sound is totally uh, neutral, sounds like a minor, sounds like major, sounds like extended minor, sounds like dominant, so it has a lot of potential applications. Now, the pitch structure of dominant and suspended pentatonics is also shown on the screen, and the main difference between the two is the absence of major third from the suspended pentatonic. The intervallic structure of pentatonics is less pre predictable than that of other scales. That feature renders them ideal for modal harmony and modal improvisation. So here's the structure of dominant pentatonic. So here you have that kind of triton because the dominant is ultimately uh, associated with that interval of the triton. And the suspended pentatonic replaces one note. The third is replaced by the fourth. Let's talk about pentatonic or modal voicings. Pentatonic scales. And by the way, there are far more pentatonics than our major, minor, dominant, and suspended. And in fact, as you will uh, learn in later lectures, any five-note collection can be classified, qualified as a, a pentatonic. And uh, pentatonic collections are extremely useful for the generation of the so-called chordal harmonies or chordal voicings. They are called chordal because the main intervallic characteristic of these voicings is the interval of the fourth. So the first thing we will do while creating modal or chordal voicings is to verticalize all the notes from the underlying pentatonic collection in such a way that the initial voicing projects strong chordal characteristics. So it has more fourths in its structure than other intervals. So if we, let's take for instance our minor pentatonic. 
and we can verticalize this linear collection in this manner. And you can see on the screen there are fourths at the bottom, fourth, perfect fourth, and major third. So there are three fourths and one third to kind of provide a nice balance to the overwhelming uh, presence of the fourth. So what we're going to do while generating chordal voicings or modal voicings, we're going to use that scale in a, unfolding in a bass and think of it as five note uh, voicing that moves to the next note from the underlying minor pentatonic collection. So when we transfer these voicings up, we're going to have five unique pentatonic sonorities. Let me play. So again, the process of generating these voices is very um, you know, logical and relatively simple. We generate the opening voicing and we move to the next note of the pentatonic scale unfolded in a bass. And each line, each note gets to the next uh, note from the pentatonic collection. And as a result, we have this wonderful collection of five voicings that can function as substitutes for your C minor harmony. So you have five different voicings and I'm playing the bass note so you can hear that, right? And they are considerably different from voicings that we've discussed earlier, you know. The presence of fourth of the fourth gives each voicing that kind of neutral character, which um, offers a lot of potential uh, applications, harmonic applications. Given the Dorian pentatonic uh, shown on the screen, the reason why this particular collection is called Dorian pentatonic is because, first of all, it's minor, and the Dorian mode is minor, and the main characteristic of the Dorian mode is the presence of the natural six, beauty mark, as we kind of call it, right? Natural six. So that pentatonic collection utilizes the most important pitches from the pentatonic, uh, uh, from the uh, Dorian mode. So we will use that uh, pentatonic to generate yet another a collection of voicings that we can use uh, in conjunction with our minor pentatonic voicings. So we do the same thing. The pentaton Dorian pentatonic unfolds in the bass, in the lowest voice. But unlike er our, like our earlier examples, we're going to provide the remaining notes from the Dorian mode, from the seventh note, from the heptatonic scale. And the reason why I want to do that is to show you uh, kind of iconic voicings from the 1959 Miles Davis recording, uh, Kind of Blue. Voicings that uh, 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 Bill Evans uh, made immortal. Right? So these are the so-called so what voicings. So now, again, our scale unfolds in a bass and we are kind of generating our opening sonority which uses more fourths than other intervals and we basically move to the next note from the Dorian scale, seven note scale. And again, just listen to the sound of this These voicings can be used as substitutes of one another. And these two voicings, in that order or in the original key, you know, 
Okay, so now let's look at the pitch structure of the dominant pentatonic because what we're doing now, we're kind of generating voicings, model voicings that we can use to realize our minor blues progression that we're working on. So now we have to take care of the dominant uh, harmonies, right? So let's look at the pitch structure of the dominant pentatonic on G and in order to provide uh, harmonic support in measures 9 and 10, right? So here is your uh, dominant pentatonic on G and here is your dominant pentatonic on A flat. So again, in keeping with our methodology of generating quartal voicings, just making sure that we have like some kind of attractive structure, right? Right, or one more time. An A flat. Again, we have like five different voicings that we can freely use uh, as substitutes of one another. All right. Uh, so since we have covered all the harmonies of the minor blues along with their pentatonic formations, let's put them to practical use and realize the entire progression. First of all, we have to realize that there are a lot of options for different harmonic realizations. Remember that each voicing from a pentatonic collection, and there are five in total, can be implemented as a possible harmonic formation. So on the screen, you can see one of the many possible realizations. Okay, so for uh, C minor, we'll use... And then on C7, we'll use voicings from the C7 pentatonic. Same thing, we have to transpose our voicings to F, right? F minor and C minor with our so what voicings and A flat, G and C minor. So now, when I play it with a metronome and use some liberties as far as rhythmic placement, and implementing some of the fifths, you know, in my left hand, I can make it sound highly idiomatic. One, two, one, two, three, four. 